magic of creation. They come up with ideas, they look for new solutions, collaborate to create original projects. Co-creation is what inspires them, pushes them forward, makes them stronger. They affirm eternal values of life, making this world a little better. Creative personalities and groups, authors of non-trivial ideas and projects, phenomenal theatrical productions and films, people of science and culture who once decided to amaze the world in documentary series Magic of Creation. Rocks, sands, clay, soil, these are the bases of the universe, the original materials of Creator. Today we are going to meet with ceramicists who have tamed the elements of earth, water, fire and wind. They believe in the harmony of the universe and transform the space under the measureless dome of Asia. Kazakhstan is a Kazakhstan is truly the crossroads of different cultures and nations. Kazakh people are very hospitable. These words alone don't mean anything, it's much grander. So many people were welcomed here, accepted as part of this country. This is home, and different cultures, different faces. I think this benefits enriches everyone. In my works, I often go back to my childhood, to the games I played as a boy. I used to visit my grandmother in the village. Those sports, baking bread, costumes, weaving, ornaments, music, melodies, all these shaped me as an artist, fueling my imagination. Famous Kazakhstani artists Yelena and Vladimir Grigoryan met each other in art school in their hometown of Baku. In 1989, during an uneasy period of political change, they were forced to leave Azerbaijan. Fate, or maybe Providence, brought them to Aktau, a city on the shore of the Caspian Sea, then named Shevchenko. It was an interesting city of young people. We were very well received and started actively participating in creative life of the city. We began teaching at an art school, then an arts college. Our favorite poet is Josef Brodsky. His wonderful words that are very much in tune with our perception. It is better to live in a remote province by the sea. We probably unconsciously follow these words. We visit those places every year. People may recognize the Gregorian's art by their central theme, theology. The artist turned to the theme of creation of the world, to philosophical interpretation of the earthly and divine in their paintings, graphics and in ceramics. It may be challenging and not just because of symbolism. Artists, like all creative people, are prone to mystification. Or is it perhaps true that providence plays a crucial role in artists' lives? I was drawn into it since I was a student, even though it was still the Soviet period. Somehow in Baku, I managed to lay my hands on a Bible and read it. Our friends were into it as well. And then, you know, it was the peak period of admiration for Tarkovsky, and he also happened to touch upon these issues. I think that these are universal topics. Topics of humanism are interesting and appealing to people. 
In our works, we often use symbols that make people think for a moment about philosophy, about life. Our art is not passive, if I may put it this way. It forces us to contemplate about our existence, our lives, who we are, where we are going, where we came from, and so on. At the moment, Yelena and Vladimir Grigorian live and work in Almaty, combining creative activity with teaching. Here they raise their daughter, who is also an artist, a designer. She is also keen on ceramics. Is it coincidence or fate? No creative work comes out of nowhere. Art has a heritage reaching back centuries. It connects generations, eras and artists. Only true artists are capable of understanding this and maintain the threads of continuity. In my view, this is very important. The great experience that we have acquired over the years needs to be passed on to the next generation. Once again I'm speaking of tradition. Recall the Renaissance era. Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo were brought to artists' workshops when they were children. It was common to leave your children with the master for several years. Starting from age 7-8 they lived in the workshop, mixing paints, cleaning up and copying the work of their masters. After that they themselves became outstanding artists. This is an old tradition. While training a cohort of young ceramicists, our heroes acquired not just fellows, but also comrades in craft. One of Yelena Grigorian's students, Sofia Maskalenko, who used to work as a lawyer in a major international association, decided to make a drastic change in her life. She founded and directs the first gallery of modern ceramics in Kazakhstan. The Grigorians are my closest associates and have been from the very beginning, from the genesis of the idea up to the present. They have traveled with me all along the way, inspiring and motivating me with their creativity, their unquenchable energy and their spiritual depth. These features attracted me to them from the first. The gallery is more than just an exhibition space. It is also a center for teaching both children and adults the art of ceramics. Some have come regularly for more than three years. Every tutor has a certain age group. I work with adults, rarely with kids. It's incredibly interesting. I think my students really need me, and I need them, because we enrich each other. One of the Gregorians' longest-running projects is called Under the Measureless Dome of Asia. This kind of art in Kazakhstan was discovered by our heroes, as a result of experiments with natural materials in their natural setting. We go to some place, pick a natural landscape and begin to create right there, on the spot. This is what we call land art, when you don't need paints, pencils or brushes. These works will not stay there forever. They are temporary. We create the piece, take pictures of it, film videos of it, and that is what is left from these experiments, photos and video footage. This enables the artist to work with different materials, soil, sand, twigs, hay, and so on.
We then gradually moved toward having installations of studio-made art objects out there, in natural landscapes, coming closer to the topic that interests us the most, the spirit of time. Nature and landscapes are where the spirit of time is always present. It is also present in archaic constructions. This is our topic, and we got to it through land art. This summer, artists and students of the Clay House Gallery gathered at the Kapchiga Reservoir near Almaty. The Gregorians gave a masterclass on the ancient Japanese technique Raku. This technique allows improvisation and enables one to use natural materials as a mean of creation. Приезжают художники, у них в наше вот такое суровое, я бы сказала, для for our difficult times, these outings with artists are an opportunity to communicate and evaluate each other's work. Here they can enjoy the luxury of good conversation. Such opportunities are so rare, and this trip gives us an opportunity to talk with each other, exchange interesting ideas and experiment. And this is the second aspect of the magic of creation, because ceramics, working with clay, is always magic. This is probably the most magical of all arts. I have the courage to say this, because I myself am a painter and have experience in graphics. For me, ceramics was love at first sight. There is a certain level of mystery, because you are working with air, water, fire and earth. Every element gets involved. It's so close to a person, so close to our nature. Everything these elements do is always spontaneous. Once again we hear the words of the beloved poet Iosif Brodsky, near water, the space is conscious of its inferiority to time and has the only property the time doesn't possess its beauty. You feel like a creator. When you take cold, inanimate clay, then something gets born from this clay right in front of you, first in your head, then in your hands. When you need it, it becomes so warm as if it were alive. But the creativity lies not only in what you've modeled, but in what the universe and kiln will make of it. Clay can convey the slightest nuances, cracks and indentations can cause an interesting plot twist, resulting in new interpretation of an object and its image. Your ideas are embodied, or they are not. In the latter case, you flatten it and start over. The best thing about clay is that anything can be fixed. You can reduce it to a lump and create something new, even more beautiful and wonderful. Working with clay and glazes is not an easy task. Skillfully laying out the glaze is a whole different story. This is a very archaic firing method, very ancient. First the item is shaped, then it is dried, and after that it gets its first biscuit firing at a temperature of 900 degrees. Only fired products can be fired in this kiln. You dig a pit with a shovel. The bottom needs to be laid with brushwood, then newspapers and covered with sawdust. This first layer is called drainage. Repeat this layering process. Then ceramic items are placed on top of the second layer. Pieces can be completely different. Here, for example, this one is fully glazed and this here is clean, without any glaze. You see, there is no trace of glazed paint here. 
What is the difference? In the absence of glaze, the smoke penetrates into all pores, resulting in an interesting archaic look of the finished item. Unglazed products can be wound with rope or wire. You can cover some fragments with scotch tape. This protects the clay surface from smoke. Firing in the kiln creates this feeling of uncertainty and unpredictability, which also makes your work unique. One-of-a-kind pieces are born with the help of fire, air and soil. It's impossible to get precisely the same effect twice. This is the essence and one of the charms of ceramics. Imagine, you are a professional artist and you think you can control all processes in ceramics as you do in painting. And right that instant something happens and you have no control over it. For us, painters, this is a real miracle, witnessing nature helping you create a piece of art. While the kiln dug in the sade was smoking, the artists were putting up finished ceramics that they brought with them. The items showed different techniques and themes. Each of them had acquired new features under the open sky and in the natural setting. Every single piece has its own story to tell. This time I brought a bell with an eye. There is a high intelligence that is omniscient and ubiquitous. Empty voice will be filled, suffering will be followed by happiness. There is a harmonizing law that brings everything into balance. And this eye is seen in all religions and other philosophical movements. Well, somehow I saw it in ceramics. Your work doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's placed either into an interior, or on a landscape, or on an exterior. Every space dictates special terms for the life of the work. It must live. Every space it lives in reveals a particular facet. I'm not talking about special lighting. The landscape itself is capable of accentuating some features. When we put ceramic items on the sand near the water, it enhances the perception of the elements that are present in these items, as well as the ones that were involved in making them. Having them displayed against the land and water emphasizes the naturalness of this material. I enjoyed watching the reaction of passers-by. People on their vacation, for instance, they got interested, come closer and looked at our work. I saw one man examining every piece from all sides. This shows it wasn't for nothing. We may have communicated the message to some people. Infinitely passing time creates space, only to enter into dispute with it. Sometimes it advances, sometimes it recedes, like water in the sea. Mystic fire, the symbol of the divine principle, performs its magic, reminding us of eternity, of cycles and rebirth. In the hands of the Creator, the elements have unlimited potential, and this magic happened before our eyes. There is an element of unpredictability. Taking the product out of the kiln, we never know what to expect. It's always a mystery until we open it up. It's very exciting. Today the firing was successful. All the works are finished. Just like their beloved poet Josef Brodsky, the artists believe that two things justify the existence of man on earth – love and creativity. Love fuels creativity. The key principle is to love thy neighbor, even your enemy. 
Live in peace with everyone, in harmony. At least you can try to do so. You can't live your life in one way and have your art follow a different path. Everything is interconnected, for it comes from the depth of the heart. The Gregorians are certain that one doesn't need much to be happy. Sometimes just picking up a piece of clay is enough. <laughs>